I'd better put it out of commission. Phil could call for help with it. There's a dent in the hood. My head could have done that. Still here so late? I was just about to shut up shop. Nothing much happened today. I can't confirm that. Did you want anything else? There's a rundown house on the road that goes to the lighthouse. Can you tell me anything about it? A pathologist used to live there, I think. He was also murdered there. But wild horses wouldn't drag me there. Hey, do you know Ralph? The tennis coach from Ipswich? Surely not. Uh, the Ralph I'm talking about is a bit mentally... well, challenged. Oh, then perhaps you mean Mrs. Puff's husband. No, I don't think that's him. Has he got a doll called Mr. Bubby? What? No, you must mean Bobby. Well, whatever. Forget it. Maybe I'll see you later. Mr. Michaels, have you had a pleasant day? Mr. Michaels? <laughs> Why aren't you calling me Mr. Fire Fiend? I know you like calling me that. I also know you're having me watched. That you set a perverted gun nut onto me who has a whole load of corpses in his cellar? I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Michaels. Are you not feeling well? You seem a little... tense. You will be too, very soon. Unfortunately, I found a letter that proves everything, written in your handwriting, to a certain Phil. He'll be sitting pretty in the slammer very soon if I take this to the police. Very well, Mr. Michaels. I too can do something. As you will have already ascertained from this letter, I am in possession of some photos that are extremely damaging for you, for which I have paid a large sum of money. Do you want to know what they show? What could they show? I'm totally innocent. You, Mr. Michaels, are on them. You can be seen running from the burning castle. Had you not put on record that you were nowhere near the castle on the day of the fire? What would the judge have to say to that? I almost fear that would be your death sentence. And just imagine. I could even profit from it. Brave hotelier convicts arsonist. 
I've got you where I want you, Mr. Michael. You won't get away with it. I'll press charges against you for blackmail. Of course you will. A pathetic lunatic from America comes to England, kills half a dozen people, and then accuses a respectable hotelier of blackmail. Wake up! You're up to your neck in it. Do what I tell you, and you'll stay alive at least. We'll see who's gonna stay alive, you cretin! Ah! God, oh, the burns! I... I wanted to kill him. I really wanted to kill him. And I had no scruples whatsoever. There was something... liberating about it. Oh, what's wrong with me? This can't be me. First these visions, and now it's becoming real. It isn't good, Adrian. It really isn't good. The medication. I should take it more regularly. Okay, calm down. Now isn't the time to lose your nerve. Murray antagonized me, and, and yeah, that could easily flip me out. It's perfectly normal. Nothing unusual. It, it can happen to anyone, and it happens in the best of families. Jeez, no. This happens a heck of a lot in my family. It's the goddamn curse or whatever. These damn pills don't help either. Or do they? Ugh. I just don't know what to do anymore. Maybe Victoria could help me. She knows all about our family and this curse. But she doesn't believe me. But can you blame her? No. I'm starting to have doubts about me. Okay. Slowly now. What should I do? If the guy goes to the police now, I've had it. These photos. I must find and destroy the photos. Then he won't have anything more on me. One problem less. I bet that thing infringes several personal rights. That doesn't seem to bother Murray at all. I bet he's got the photos somewhere in his office. Either an ancient brand, or a fake. Probably from the time of the sanatorium. Filled with nasty, poisonous stuff. Let's see... No, even worse. The thing's full of tins of skin cream. Active Lift Super Moist, for the man over 40. <laughs> Murray's secret anti-wrinkle stash. A thousand tips to success, customers as a means to an end, tax savings for managers. Boxes and boxes full of plastic knives and murderer dolls. Huh. The wall has three niches. There's a big steel cabinet in the middle one, and the other two are bookshelves. Huh. Murray himself in oil. A real businessman. He's hung himself up in the office. Murray's Hotelia certificate. <laughs> if that's authentic, then I really am Darren Michaels. Murray's Hotelia certificate. Murray's baby in oil. Hundreds of plastic soul keys. I wonder if Murray miscalculated a bit there. <laughs> Murray's plans for the future. 
Mm. I'd go for a Gordon theme park, a wild water slide with artificial blood instead of water, and you'll ride in a coffin. A large steel locker. If Murray has something he wants to keep safe, it's sure to be in here. No chance. This thing's locked and made of solid steel. It's also screwed into the floor, and I don't know the combination. A telephone. Murray's Hotelier certificate. <laughs> if that. A toolbox. It wasn't there yesterday. Is Murray doing the renovation himself? <laughs> Whatever, I'll just help myself. Not too well organized. Pliers. They could come in handy later. Otherwise, just screws, nails, and fuses. Only a load of junk in it now. Three and a half meters from the corner to the place where the steel locker stands. For what? The steel locker is behind this wall. I just need to know where exactly. For what? I'm not gonna start cutting off the wallpaper like a madman, even if it would give... The floor plan of the hotel. Wow, that's a really ugly carpet. Probably a relic from Murray's old pawn shop. I can't believe that Murray keeps the key for the locker here, but I'll check all the same. What have we got here? This is a user manual for the steel locker. Interesting. If you have forgotten your combination, the serial number is stamped on the rear panel. Write it down and telephone the following number. 01473 slash serial number plus the last two digits of your year of birth. An automated information desk will then tell you your combination. That's what I call service. Now I just need Murray's date of birth and the serial number. Murray's date of birth will probably be on here. There it is, 1942. Huh. <laughs> 
He's quite an old timer. The creep. If I've got it right in my mind, the steel locker must be exactly behind this part of the wall. I'll remove the wallpaper. Hmm, a brick wall. Looks very old and the mortar's crumbling. Right here, on the other side of the wall, is the steel locker. I can use this to scratch out the mortar from between the bricks. That should do it. That's the back wall of the steel locker. And here's the serial number. 8528-173. That's the back and here's the serial number. Alright then, let's see if it works. The combination is 4 right, 8 left, 15 right, 16 left, 23 right, 42 left. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Ta-da! <laughs> How about that? Hmm. Various photos of different people. Denise and Spooner doing... Ugh. Oh, and here's one of Matt taking a leak on the police station. <laughs> Is that why he was in the slammer? I'll get rid of all this crap the next chance I get. There's something else in the envelope. Bingo! Reliable photographic evidence. It doesn't prove my guilt, but Angelina's. Caught in the act of arson, I gotta show this to Victoria right away. It'll convince her of my innocence. I just need to avoid running into Sister Antolini. She'd be sure to send me packing again. And Murray was just bluffing. There aren't any compromising photos of me. Angelina doing her favorite things, murder and arson. Oh boy, guy was lucky that she didn't catch him taking these photos. That photo won't help me much with the police. He can't see Miss Valley's corpse. But perhaps I can use it to convince Victoria that I'm innocent? Murray's collection of blackmail material. Oh, that guy is so sick. And here, a page from the Willow Creek Daily from last year. What did he save that for? Perhaps because of the article about the robbery in an old people's home in Ipswich. Valuable objects, cash, and passports were stolen. Hmm. Or perhaps Murray was interested in the article about Spooner's transfer to the provinces. It says here that a young cop from London will replace the well-loved Inspector Collier, who's retiring. Conrad Spooner led the investigation in a case which didn't exactly cover the London police service in glory. More on page 7. 
Is Spooner just the scapegoat, or did he really do a bad job? Huh, <laughs> one thing's for sure. He won't be able to fill Inspector Collier's shoes so quickly. I guess he really doesn't like them either. Murray's collection of blackmail material. You can't live in more place for nothing all year. Damn, I think Tom's coming. Yeah, what you on about? It's just one more week. Just in time. They almost saw me. She is again. The white lady from the shack. What? Oh, she's coming closer. Oh, she's floating like a ghost. What if she is one? Keep calm, Darren. At least it would be better than one of those hellhounds. A friendly ghost is actually fine. Particularly when it's so beautiful. Also sad. Hmm. Should I follow her? Into the realm of the dead, or what? Oh, whatever. I've still got a whole packet of Halo Paradox with me. If the whole thing gets a bit too crazy for me, I'll take one. Where has she gone now? Strange, I hardly let her out of my sight. gate is open for me? Huh. I hope the ghost is some kind of angel. This isn't the gate to hell. Huh. The scaffolding is just asking to be climbed on. But unfortunately, I can't see any open windows. Anyway, it would be impossible to climb on it quietly without being noticed. It's certainly decorative, if you like having boulders in your garden. It's certainly decorative.
There are people in the hall. Instruction guys, I guess. I'd better go another way. Otherwise, Sister Antolini is sure to get wind that I'm in the castle. Whatever's being mixed in here, it can't be cement. Otherwise, there'd be a pile of sand nearby. I hope the construction guys know what they're doing. A pane of glass is missing, but it still works. It's certainly decorative, if you like having boulders in your garden. A bit small for having a barbecue, but there's the garden for that. I wonder if there was ever a pretty maiden in this castle. Why do I constantly have the feeling that a big monkey is sitting up there throwing barrels at me? To say it's dilapidated would be a serious understatement. Here it goes down a few meters, and then the large surrounding garden begins. The fitting description would be wilderness. It looks even older than the castle if that's at all possible. It's certainly decorative. Pretty tall, this greenhouse. It's more like an orangery, where lemon trees are housed over the winter. If I remember correctly, Victoria's in the castle, not in the greenhouse. Not exactly what you'd expect from a castle garden. Looks like Lewis hadn't taken his job seriously for quite some time. Oh look, a wheelbarrow, used to transport drunken workers. An empty pot. I'm guessing the guys here have heated up their lunch in it. I have no idea what I can do with a pot at the moment. I think I'll leave it here. An empty pot. I have no idea what... It's an iron sealing truss. Hopefully, they're supporting the unsound masonry. There's a candle. If I don't have a flashlight, I should at least take this with me. No crockery left in here. All gone in the fire, I guess. The kitchen looks like a real mess. Lewis must have started the blaze here. There's nothing left to eat here. <laughs> the most I could hope for here is smoked meat. Judging by the state of this door, it'll create a level of noise equivalent to a collapsing house when you open it. That would be much too loud. Don't step on a creaky floorboard. 
Damn, it'd be impossible to sneak past them unnoticed. I have to distract them somehow. Hmm. I can use the pliers to get the slug out of the cartridge. That way I'll make the thing harmless and get a charge of gunpowder at the same time. I'll fill the cardboard tube with the gunpowder. Just a shame that it always trickles out of the ends. The wax is too hard to seal the roll with. Click. Let there be light. I can seal the cardboard roll with the wax so the gunpowder doesn't trickle out. of glass is missing, but it still works. I'll stick the cigarette in one end of the cardboard roll. If you light the cigarette, it'll burn down and make the gunpowder explode. So now I've built my own firework. perfect place to set up my firewood. It's dry and the construction guys are sure to notice a broken lamp. Okay, I've got about two minutes until this explodes. So, it's time. After all, I want to be in the front row when the show begins. Oh, what was that? It sounded like a gunshot. Damn, why aren't they going out? <laughs> Might have been a firework. I saw one of them spotty kids messing around in a wall again recently. Have you seen what they've done to our scaffolding? Uh, no. I've been on the facade since last week. They've covered it in paint! Go and have a look. It's like a, like a hippie ladder. <laughs> Little sods. Why are they hanging around here not in school? What's that about? Steve. I've got an idea. What kind of idea, Greg? Why don't we? Stick their fireworks up their spotty bums and fly under the moon! <laughs> yeah, why not? Blast. I hope they don't actually catch up with those poor kids. <laughs> Could turn ugly. Damn. 
What's all that noise? Uh... Greg, Steve, was that you? Hey, Greg, Steve, what the heck is going on here? She's disappearing into the hall. Now full speed to Victoria. Victoria? Please wake up, Victoria. What? Who? Adrian? What are you doing here? I, I told you, I, I don't want to see you again. I'm sorry, but I gotta talk to you. I can prove I'm innocent. You can see Angelina here on this photo, Victoria, killing Miss Valley. Here, look at it. Angelina? But why? I don't understand. Angelina also gave the order to set the castle on fire. And she killed Sally, Catherine, and Louis. All just because of Mordred's curse. She needed my blood, because only male Gordons are capable of activating Mordred's power. You knew about that, Victoria. Please don't tell me you didn't know. But she was my little Angelina. How could she do something like that? I was hoping you could tell me that. There's that order that followed me. Miss Valley's order? A bunch of bunglers. They wanted to prevent something like what happened 12 years ago from happening again. But they've got no idea what they're fighting against. Most of them see it as an amusing diversion from their lives. Acting mysteriously and having secret meetings in silly frocks. Miss Valley was the only one who really knew what it was about. The original order has existed for hundreds of years. It keeps the secrets hidden. However, we supported Miss Valley financially. It was, after all, in our interest that you, Adrian, did not return to Black Mirror. I see. I saw something strange there, and, and I don't know who else I could ask about it. This white lady, exactly the one in this painting, or very similar, I don't know. But either way, I saw her in the woods. She was running around like a ghost. But it wasn't a ghost, was it? A white lady in the woods? Are you sure? So it really was a ghost. Oh my god, I really am going crazy. No, no. Calm down, Adrian. Everything's fine. Perhaps better than I dared to hope. Tell me more about the lady. What did she look like? What did she have on? I didn't see her all that well. She had long white hair. She had a long dress on with a belt, some kind of coat of arms on it. The woman you saw is Maria Gordon, Mordred's wife. She can find no peace, not for centuries. She wanders the woods of Black Mirror because she's searching for her child. Her child and Mordred's. I've seen her too. You've seen her too? Uh, then she really does exist. We're in Black Mirror Castle, Adrian. Which reality are you talking about? What happened to the child? All right. What I'm about to tell you has never left these walls. And it would be good 
If it stayed that way, it's perhaps the oldest of our family stories, and also the most dreadful. You want to know what happened to the child? That's what Maria asks herself to this day. All we know is that Mordred took it away because he thought it wasn't his biological child. He thought Maria cheated on him with his brother, Marcus, and wanted to make her pay for that. What he did to the child remains a mystery until today. It was never seen again. So Mordred's wife was unfaithful, and, and because of that he cursed everyone? No, Maria wasn't unfaithful to Mordred. <laughs> It was his hate that made him think something like that. Hate and jealousy towards his brother. Even though the two of them fought many battles together, side by side. But that was before they came to Black Mirror. Something here changed Mordred, contaminated his heart. He mistrusted everyone. His soldiers, his wife, his brother, became more and more withdrawn, became arrogant. Finally, he looked at his own child and didn't recognize it. Thought he could see similarities with his brother in his face. He wanted to kill it, but no one knows if he did. One thing's for sure. He snatched it from Maria and took it into the catacombs under the castle. In her desperation, Maria called for Marcus, begged him for help. For Mordred, this was further evidence to support his suspicion. Marcus came, challenged Mordred to a duel, and killed him. But he didn't find the child, no matter how he searched. It was as though he'd disappeared. What kind of curse is it? Before Mordred died, he put a curse on Marcus's male descendants. They were to complete his work. One day, a Gordon devoted to evil would be born, who would bring Mordred back to the realm of the living. And Angelina wanted to have his power. But why, if only the male Gordons were cursed? Because your twins, the curse, must have somehow got mixed up. How's that? I'm sorry. I can't tell you any more, Adrian. It is just an assumption. What? Adrian, we've no time to lose. You're the last Gordon of the Marcus lineage. The castle should belong to you. Give me some paper and a pen. There, in the drawer. I must confirm your true identity. Otherwise, no one will know that you're the lawful heir. Hurry. I can feel my strength waning, Adrian. My life's coming to an end. No, no, Victoria. Please. I need you. I won't know what to do without you. me, you might not have been in this position. We were very thorough when it came to you. He even had you a death certificate drawn up. Let me guess, Dr. Herman did that. We made a mistake. 
Forgive me, Adrian. It's all right. You only wanted to protect me. But it might have been better if I'd known what it was about. Then I might not have walked into Angelina's trap. What can you tell me about the ritual chamber? I've never been there myself. But apparently, Mordred's power is strongest there. That place is not of this world. It's in the Shade World. I think me and Angelina... We heard Mordred when we were there. What exactly happened in the Ritual Chamber? Well, I completed all of the tasks. Uh, spilt my blood on the relief. And did you speak the words? I think so. Oh God, Adrian. Then the ritual's complete. You've laid open the way for Mordred. What... what do you mean? Am I cursed now? Worse, Adrian. Worse. Mordred's spirit is now in you. Adrian, in you. Oh my god, Adrian, what have you done? Mordred is inside me? Oh hell, that's exactly what I feared. Stay calm. Let's stay calm and think. How do you feel? Is anything different? Yes, uh, there are the, these visions. They feel quite real. They're sick, violent, but maybe they aren't anymore. I wanted to go for Murray's throat earlier. That definitely wasn't a vision. Hmm. When did you see the White Lady lost? Uh, just now, in front of the castle. Then you haven't yet done evil. Your heart is still pure. You're strong, Adrian. You've managed to resist. And you must continue to do so. Resist Mordred for as long as you can. He will get stronger and stronger, and you will get weaker. He wants to control you. At some point, he will take control of you. How can I prevent Mordred from controlling me? There are only two ways to banish him. Mordred's vessel must be destroyed. You know what I mean by that. I guess you mean the Samuel variety? A little jump from the tower directly onto a pointy iron fence? Sounds tempting. It's certainly the easier option. Really? What would the difficult one be, then? You have to go back to where everything began. To the ritual chamber? Uh, but, but it's buried. Where everything began. Uh, but, but do you mean where Mordred uttered the curse? It's all written in the book. In which book? Uh, I'm so tired, Adrian. I... I can't go on. No, no, please don't close your eyes now, Victoria. Stay awake, please. Just, just tell me what book you're talking about. A chronicle, or, or the Bible? The book. Please read it. In the room. Wh which room? Under the ground. The six men is. We'll point you to the entrance. Which meneers? The path begins there. The path. You have to follow to the end. To the very end. D do you mean the, the big stones around the castle? Start there. Search at the meneers. Adrian. Promise me. Yes, yes, I'll do it. Promise me. Yes, I, I promise. Victoria, Victoria, please, please wait. There's so much you have to tell me. Victoria.
What are you doing here? How did you get She's in? dying. Do something. Quick! Leave now. Lady Victoria Gordon has passed away. She leaves behind an empty place in our hearts. Let us pause a moment and bid her farewell in silent prayer. Dear mourners, as we part, I would like to leave you with a few words to reflect upon. Words which have guided Lady Victoria throughout her life in both good and troubled times. So faith, hope, and love abide, these three. Said Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, but the greatest of these is love. Now, as we are saying goodbye to Lady Victoria Gordon, let us do so with these words in mind. Amen. Adrian, my sincere condolences. Thanks. Your great-grandmother was a quite extraordinary woman. Yes, she was. Upright and of good heart. Yeah. It's a pity I only got to know her so late. Better late than never. You are Lady Victoria's only kin, and therefore her sole heir. You can now move into the castle and take some time to reflect, to find some peace, Adrian. And say farewell not only to your great-grandmother, but to your old life, too. If you need any help, you know where to find me. Thank you, Father Frederick. My condolences, Adrian. Thanks, Doc. How are you? Well, this is the funeral of the last member of my family. That's it. From now on, I'm alone on God's Earth. Utterly alone. I suddenly find Mordred's presence in my head a little comforting. He is part of the family, after all. We could have our session now, if you like. No, I'd just like to have some space right now. Can we move it to this afternoon? How about three o'clock, at my practice? Okay. See you then, Adrian. Adrian Gordon, the last, but not the least. Or maybe he is. What a great time to say that, but I wouldn't expect anything else from you. That's right. You even carried your great-grandmother to her grave, who you'd known hardly three or four weeks. Sorry for your sad loss. That I'm sure you'll get over very quickly, and congratulations on hitting the jackpot. What jackpot? Do you mean the burned-down castle that I'm duty-bound to rebuild according to the will? Or do you mean by being the last in line of a family of sickos and murderers? You call it that, but anyone else would call inheriting a magnificent estate and rising up into the nobility an incredible real stroke of luck. But you were always good at playing the victim. That's what you think. Any other cop would overcome his prejudices and just look at the facts. Talking of cops, as you're now a British citizen, I'm afraid I can no longer get you deported. Let me make myself clear. The slightest hint of suspicion, and I'll have you back inside. And that's a promise. Why do you want to keep me so close to you? Haven't you got any other friends? Why don't you go see Denise more often? That'll take the heat off a bit. You'll soon stop talking so tough. Have it your way. And now if you'll excuse me, Inspector, I have to go count my guest bathrooms. <laughs> 